So, so here we are on Pier 1. Now this was, in its later stages, used as a truck depot, basically, okay? But, and, uh, you know, essentially that's what it, the, the land half of it was always even in the, um, in the shipping days. So you would unload boats, put stuff in a big shed, and then take them away in cars, uh, trucks. So this was basically flat, okay, with a big L-shaped pier uh, shed on it. And, um, and of course, one of the interesting things from a landscape design perspective is always, how do you introduce somebody to a site, right? And then also, how do you engage the view, okay? Now, the thing is, it's almost hard to say this, but we almost had like too much view, right? Uh, like, how could you be, like, no park even has just what we got there, right? When we came in along the bridge. And we have like a lot more. So one of the big decisions was to control that and kind of uh, 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 parse it out. Um, so you didn't kind of see everything and then just want to go back home by the time you came in, right? So the, the big uh, idea, or what we wound up doing here, was taking this flat site, which was essentially one site, right, with a beautiful edge, but as you moved back, you got away from the water, and you got closer to the BQE, you couldn't really see the water anymore. It was flat, and it was hot, and it was boring, honestly. So, um, so what we did is, is we made this big hill, okay? This is actually made out of stone that is being excavated out of a subway tunnel being bored from Long Island into the Grand Central Station called the Eastside Access Project. So it's pure crushed rock, like perfect building base material. And that makes the whole hill here, which is about 30 feet high. So we brought in thousands of cubic yards of soil to make this core uh, here. And what that did in one simple move was take one space and make it into multiple spaces, okay? That kind of unfold as you move through the space. And so we have this main promenade that goes up this way. There's also the waterfront promenade. Um, and then there's another promenade that goes on the other side of the hill uh, that has a water garden on it. So I just like to talk a little bit about what we were trying to do here. And we'll walk up to the top. You'll see how we show you some more views up there. And then we'll go down and we'll go look at some of the water gardens as well, okay? So one of the big planting challenges here, um, there's just like so many things to talk about to a group that's actually interested in like my mind races, you know? Uh, you know so um, excuse me for trying to collect my thoughts for a second, but um, one of the big planting challenges here was obviously uh, was the scale of trees, okay? Because as we all know, trees are little when you plant them, and then they get to be 10 or 20 times the size, okay? And not, and in our lifetimes too, not like in 100 years, but in our lifetimes. And, you know, you, if you buy a couch for your apartment, and it's four inches the wrong size, and it's a disaster, right? Meanwhile, we design with trees, and they change by 10, 20 times in size. So it's crazy in a way. It's sort of insane what we do. And, uh, and so how do we introduce shade, which is so important, as you all just pointed out to me, um, uh, on this very sunny waterfront site. It's, it's almost you forget in New York how sunny the waterfronts are because the rest of New York ain't that sunny, right, with all the tall buildings. So how do you introduce really dedicated shade so people like literally don't sunburn to death, um, but still have lots of positive open spaces, void spaces, right? They give us beautiful views. This one's called the Bridgeview Lawn here. And we're gonna go up to the top and we're gonna see the Harbor View Lawn. Um, and and we also would pass the Vale, which is another open space. So we came up with this strategy of kind of designed hedgerows. So sort of learning from the agricultural prototype and then bringing it into a design prototype. What, we're think what we did here is, and it's asymmetrical treatment on either side, okay? So we placed trees, not scattered around in the grass, right? But actually denser along major pathways. So then when the trees get really big, they're still not, they're not gonna swallow up the lawn and turn it into a little small scale dirt hole, which is what a lot of them happens in the park, right? Because if you scatter trees around, they look great. Either they look great at the beginning or they look good in the end, but it's sort of hard. So the idea here is these will get big it will become this wonderful green tunnel, right? By the way, nothing has been in the ground here for more than about 
15 months. Okay? So this is this was completed last year. Um, this was completed last year uh, and maybe like in June. Okay, some of it was still ongoing in the middle of the summer, so it's just only a year old. Um, so so that was a big thing. And then and then we did two different kind of riffs on that hedgerow uh, typology. On the left side, we called what we made what we called the open hedgerow. We spaced the trees out a little bit more, but all, basically close, so they push each other up, fighting for the light, right? And they open up the view. So the park has a weird image right now because it's very full at eye level. And that's kind of neat, but it's kind of not really the ultimate intention or image of the park. It's that the trees, with the Rebecca's encouragement, of course, will push each other up, fighting for the light, and, and just like they do in a forest, and we'll, and we'll kind of prune branches off at the, on the lower level and give us more views in here than we have right now, okay? So in the open hedgerow that, that was integrated into, gra into the grass, um, so you could get right in there and get a nice shaded place to sit on the lawn immediately. And then what we've done is, in a New York City you can't have a park and just let everybody walk everywhere, right? You can, and then the operators will go and put the range fence everywhere, right? Because they have to, not because they're mean, because they have to. And so what we try to do is incorporate the range fence into the design instead of having it come as a, as a consequence of bad design <laughs> so uh, or unanticipated element that was needed so we we developed this um, this range fence which is derived from an agricultural sheep fencing system used in New Zealand where they and those are native black locust posts and the wire is is uh, tensioned between and it's for 20 feet apart if they can be so you get a lot of transparency but it kind of gently guides people as to where. And so Jeff, who runs the whole thing, and the uh, uh, kind of a uh, head operator, uh, he could close off a lawn by just closing the gates into that space, okay? Instead of trying to like throw a snow fence around the whole thing, like after a big rainstorm or something like that, right? Then on the, on the right side here, the hedgerow is more complex. And I'm getting into some little crazier kind of design and management ideas over here, okay? There's two things going on on the right, and I want you to look at that as we walk up. One is the planting, the trees are a little denser in the so-called dense hedgerow, as we call it. And they're underplanted with a selection of plants to kind of make a linear garden of some of the things you'd find in a hedgerow, but a lot of them are kind of special cultivars that will stay low, which you kind of can't tell right now because the trees and the, and the shrubs are merging together, right? But we have like blue muffin um, uh, arrow viburnum, right? Which is a small version. We have other smaller versions of like hummingbird, uh, clethra hummingbird, right? And more dwarf uh, winter berries and things like that. So. So we'll have that without a lot of crazy levels of pruning uh, to go on in there ultimately. But then beyond that, you'll see, which it really looks kind of nutty right now, which I love, but still a few uh, is what we call, then this is the real experiment of the park, okay? Um, and like I told Rebecca on her first day at work, or the first day I finally got to talk to her, um, Hey, this is a collaboration with you before you existed, but now you're here, so let's see what we're gonna do, okay? Um, and, and, and get ready for this, manage succession, okay? So this strip area outside on the bank that goes down is the area, and we have a couple of areas on Pier 1, where the intention is manage succession, okay? So we have a lot of old field plants in there, the kind of wonderful color that you don't normally have in a city because there's not enough light, or they're succession plants. So they go away. So sumacs and sassafras and things like that um, are and bayberry and things that always get shaded out, right, by climax trees or buildings uh, are in there. And the and the idea is to keep it and to figure out how, to work with the the future horticulturist who now exists uh, to figure out how to manage that to keep it in a kind of a state of succession otherwise known to ecologists as a state of disturbance, right? So what we're going to do is go in there in some kind of logical or semi-logical way and cut back at times, right? Like maybe when the 
certain things 